Have you ever had issues trading a ranging market? If so, keep watching because today I will cover everything you need to know about how to trade a market in a range, where to put your stop loss, your entry and uh, your take profit level. We're going to also take a look at all the major currencies for the upcoming week. So while I wrote the intro and disclaimer, hit that like button for me. And if you're new to the channel, do not forget to subscribe. See you there. Welcome back guys. In my previous uh, weekly overview, I had uh, two comments uh, about uh, ranging markets. So the first one was from uh, Gigi Manea uh, and it was, thanks Pierre, I trade only one market, uh, Dow. When you say buy low, sell high on oil, where do you recommend to set the take profit? Before reaching the opposite level, can you please explain in next weekly video where to enter, where to put stop loss, take profit in a ranging market? I'm interested in particular in oil, the way it looked last Thursday and Friday. So we will cover that. And uh, we had another um, comment from uh, Kashif Arshad. Thanks for you looking into it. And uh, he means about the quality of the video. And it was really complex to trade during the short in last week. What you think about it, please let me know in your coming video. So here comes uh, the answer for that, guys, because both of them are about ranging markets. So it is a great um, opportunity to show you how uh, that could play it. So we will start with uh, the question about the oil <clears throat> and uh, the question was uh, about how it looks like Thursday and Friday. So on uh, the uh, one hour chart for oil, uh, Thursday was this area here. So we had uh, the prices was reaching this level on Thursday and uh, Friday the, the price reached this level once again, as you see. So uh, how to trade a ranging market? Uh, it is always um, easy when we talk about um, ranging markets on textbooks. So what basically is a ranging market? Uh, well, if you look at the textbook, it is uh, about trading between two levels. So you have um, a market that, uh, not making uh, uh, neither higher highs or lower lows. So it's going to look something like this. You have the market, let's say it's coming from below, reach it a level of resistance, move back down, support. And now we start having the range when we have at least one high here, one low here. The next move to the upside, one could expect possible uh, rejection and as you see, it is a fair price here and both um, buyers and sellers are happy with the price at this range and it may keep going like this. I think something fundamentally new entered to the market, then we're going to see a possible break to maybe to the upside or a break to the downside. So as far as there is no change in market sentiment, nothing fundamentally new, uh, this called a fair value. Both sellers and buyers are happy with the price and uh, trading in this area. So that is a range in a nutshell, but it looks always easy when you look at the textbooks. Yeah, but on chart, you will not get it as nice as you have it here. So um, let's uh, take a look at that. So if we start with the oil, since uh, the question was about oil and uh, particularly uh, Thursday and uh, Friday move. So uh, these are the levels that we're gonna uh, watch. Um, ahead of that, we had a clear range on oil because as you see, uh, after this move to the upside, we had this uh, retest to the previously broken structure. The market bounced higher once again for another attempt to the upside. And this was the last high we had since then market pushed back down and we start seeing this established range another attempt to, uh, to the top here which moved lower 
a fake out below happened here. So this is where it gets tricky. Uh, as I said, textbook looks always great, but you will we will not always have such a scenario as we had here, uh, almost to the pip before the market reversed to the downside. As you see here, we had a fake out, a trap, a bearish trap, many uh, um, um, traders got trapped here because there is those uh, who trade the breakouts based on limit order uh, or a stop plot a stop order i would say and got stopped here and we saw that the market directly moved back inside the range as far uh, as soon as that happened we should expect the market to uh, start um, respecting this level again so yet once another time uh, as you see here market pushed higher could not break above this level so we are now trading in a lower range so keep always an eye on those levels as well because this is also a range you could see it like this this is also a range if you look at the wick here of this this was also a fake out <clears throat> Uh, we had this high this high and we had this fake out and the market pushed back down another fake out and here it got respected a couple of times so when trading such market keep an eye also on the inner range that will happen uh, as well many times that you see two range inside each others but since uh, the question was about thursday uh, and friday in particular let's keep um, looking at those so here we had the uh, Thursday move, uh, how I would enter this market. Uh, there is um, many ways to do that. Uh, my uh, way of trading this in particular, my favorite ones are the ones with a trap. So after this candle, I would love to go long. Uh, it is a bullish engulfing candle. Uh, after a trap here, we get the bullish engulfing candle. This would be my entry stop loss uh, with 180R below the low of the candle. I, I would target the previous structure high in such a scenario. Okay, for the Thursday move, uh, we did not have that fake out, but there was also evidence on the chart. If we look at this move here, after the strong momentum candle here, the market uh, kept pushing higher. But if you look at the bodies of these candles, uh, very small bodies, this strong bullish candle got uh, rejected uh, quickly. And then we uh, continued to have small bodied candles. The market was making higher highs, but on the RSI, we had a clear bearish diversion. That also something that I want to see uh, on the RSI when I'm trading range. I would love to see divergence happening near the top and uh, especially if the RSI reached the extreme of a bot to then the price keep pushing higher like we had here and then uh, <coughs> reach the top. And when the price reached the top, the divergence was very clear. The next step here is um, a trigger uh, near this area. What trigger should we use? In this case, we had actually a very nice bearish engulfing candle, this black candle here that I uh, want to use as my uh, entry uh, trigger. So at the close of that candle, enter the market here. And it's now about placing stop loss where to put our stop loss usually i would go with at least 180r but from the four hour time frame okay so keep following uh, let's go to indicators and uh, bring the atr here we have it average true range i would put that on my uh, screen uh, during that period of time and then I would go to the four hour time frame uh, near the entry uh, area here. So the entry was uh, on the one hour time frame. It was here. So we move to the four hour time frame and I will check what is the ATR on that four hour time frame. So the ATR down here was at 0.50. So that means I will go with 50. 0.50 above the previous structure high and that is the previous structure high i'm talking about this highest high here is uh, up here so my stop loss would be let's say this was the previous high um 29.29 and i will add an atr of 50 so that would be 0.79 to the upside on the stop loss okay so 79 up almost up here okay 
an ATR from the 4 hour time frame above previous high and target always would be the latest lowest low uh, near the range and I would use the body of the candle not the wick so if this had a wick like let's say this uh, candle had a wick like this I would not use the lowest low of the wick I would use the body of this last swing low we had near uh, the bottom of the range if that gives me more than one to one then I'm happy to go with the trade entry as I said uh, after the close of the bearish engulfing candle it have to be closed and stop loss 180 R since I'm entering on the one hour I want to be more safe that's why I use the four hour especially on oil it is a volatile market and you cannot go with a tight stop loss here uh, the oil spikes a lot and you need to give it uh, a bit of room to breathe so if we would use an ATR from the one hour uh, time frame that would be 0.21 above the high and that is uh, for me that is not uh, enough so that's why I when I gonna enter the market um, I will go to the four hour time frame and check that ATR and add it above the previous high here that way I will give it a bit of room and I will wait for my target to reach so in this case the trade went like this as you see we had a nice push to the downside didn't reach target another correction yet again a break below and one could expect the market now to reach target it didn't and as you see it went all the way back up to that structure had you put your stop loss as the textbook teach you about how to trade um, engulfing candles every textbook you will see they will tell you put the stop loss just above the bearish engulfing can candle in this case you would be stopped out if you were still in the trade yeah so uh, if you were still in this trade waiting for that target you would be stopped out but since we gave the market a little bit room to breathe it could go all the way to this level all the way to uh, 58.4 without stopping and uh, stopping you out to then give you another move to the downside and target got reach it so here there is many ways to play this um, one could argue that uh, the market did actually break above previous high you maybe have rules about if that start to happen you would close the trade in profit and go out it's it depends and uh, it's up to each trader to have their own rules but this is how i would uh, play it uh, the same thing would go with uh, this one to the opposite side and if you didn't take uh, the trade on thursday since um, the question was both about uh, how the market uh, react uh, on uh, those levels so you had friday here the market did reach this level and as you see again very strong push to then as if it hit a wall the market start going sideways very small bodied candles and here we've got my favorite entry and that is actually the trap after a breaking above slightly higher above all highs we have now uh, many trades that got trapped because they went long um, on the breakouts after that directly we get a bearish engulfing candle another trigger to go uh, short so i would enter at the um, close of that candle so uh, after the bearish engulfing close I will enter the market same as before you either uh, target the bottom of the range or this previous low if you want to be more conservative about your uh, target so either the previous major swing low or the bottom of the range down here and the same would go even this time I would go to the four hour time frame check the ATR and add it to my um, add it to my um, uh, stop loss so uh, we go to the four hour time frame during this candle and check what was the ATR at this time there was 47.47 so that would be once again 0.47 above the highest high in this case this candle was the highest high and we will add those uh, 47 uh, above and again if we get one to one 
this is uh, good to go. Uh, there is also another way to do it. As soon as you get a fixed one-to-one -one trade, uh, take profit. You would take profit at the first level and target to at the bottom of the range. You could play it that way as well. But as always, you need to have some rules. What is the level you want to trade at? Why? What is your trigger? Is it um, you have to have a couple uh, of triggers uh, that you use bearish engulfing, bullish engulfing, double top, double bottom, whatever trigger you have, you need to have those uh, in place before you start uh, trading. So that is uh, about oil, guys. Let's take a look at the uh, Euro USD. And uh, the question about that was uh, um, that um, Kashif said it was really complex to trade USD short uh, in last week. And uh, I think uh, the, 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 the reason he's talking about short because I've been mentioning this uh, move here on EURUSD and we've been talking in my weekly overview that um, this level of interest here since the market broke this neckline we will start looking to short this market near the uh, neckline break. So we had also our Fibonacci retracement when I talked about this and I mentioned the monthly pivot point and the neckline as an area of interest. Now, what happened on EURUSD last week, same as oil, you had a clear defined range, especially after uh, this rejection, the market had this retest another rejection here and then we entered a narrow range before we tested once again this low to push all the way back up to this top of the range now during this uh, period of time this was a clear uh, signal if that was not enough here and uh, you would uh, let's say um, got bored of the trade with after this shooting star formation you went out whatever for whatever reason you didn't want to be in the market for a long time the market gave you yet another chance if we look at this uh, on the four hour time frame there was this break higher yeah if you went long and uh, waiting for more upside the market failed to make a new high here the market failed to make a new high here so what are we waiting for we should be looking to uh, short this market because it never was able to leave the range so if we go down to that one hour time frame at the top once again here a new trader will get trapped a flag they will see a flag and get very happy about it and trade it against previous uh, swing high which is could be a short term trade with a stop loss below this but you probably uh, will not uh, have a target higher than previous high that would not be a good idea so what happened here there was a break everyone was happy very strong candle all of a sudden after that you get a doji candle which is uh, an evening star formation a bearish uh, candle after that the market make the last attempt and here we go again we've get our trap so another great example of how uh, the traders get traps you have the trap you have a um, the divergence is there on the uh, four hour uh, on the both on the four hour and the one hour another rule uh, is met and the bearish engulfing candle was huge here so it was a clear signal for going short when the candles are very big you could um, wait for some correction before entering you don't need to enter at the close of the candle but let's say you want to enter um, at the bearish engulfing candle no matter what again you need to give some room so if we uh, take a look on the rsi on the euro uh, it is not a very fast moving pair so for that uh, one i would look at the um, uh, atr on the same time frame and in that case the atr during that candle was at uh, 0.78 uh, oh, 0.78 yes so that would be my um, placement above give that room above the um, the highest high which is this candle in this case push that um, 
above and targeting the bottom of the range if you get a one-to-one -one, you're good to go if you don't get a one-to-one -one, this is not a trade to take okay so you need to go down to maybe a lower time frame to, to find something to find some structure but in this case if you enter at the break of this candle to get a one-to-one -one, your stop loss um, need to be very close to previous high and even if you've got that very tight stop loss you still do not have a one-to-one -one. so it is not always um, as we see here uh, easy but if we go down to the lower time frame did we have uh, signals on the 15 minute time frame well on the 15 minute time frame there was actually a shooting star formation a perfect one this was the trap and a candle that closed below uh, the low of uh, the shooting star candle this is your trigger candle now it is a much better uh, scenario because uh, you would be uh, early in this trade the signal of the 15 minute is not as strong as the one hour or the four hour and you need to be uh, aware of that uh, again if the market would give you a one-to-one to, -one to um, the major swing low uh, the previous major swing low you could uh, you could go for it depends on uh, what where that major swing low is if it is uh, down here it would not be uh, really a one-to-one -one. or if you want to target the bottom of the range which is the possible market objective in this case then you could go for it yeah so be aware of these scenarios uh, it is not always uh, late to enter a market uh, if you miss the one hour you could go down to the 15 minute time frame seeing this correction retest and enter on that retest on a limit order so there is so many ways to do that and um, during uh, this uh, time here we've got another fake move uh, another trap breaking higher to then push lower so uh, that was uh, maybe the reason um, uh, Kashif talking about it was uh, hard traded because there was a lot of smaller range as you see here and the price broke lower to then give you another smaller range to break higher and then push back down once again until we've got that break out of the range then it's game over when that happened and usually you're gonna see a strong push lower because there is so much stops below here that got triggered and give more momentum to the move to the downside so that was it about uh, range trading i hope uh, you find it uh, helpful guys there is um, at least a couple more ways to play it but uh, that will make this video very very long and we still have uh, the major charts uh, the the major currencies to look at for the upcoming week so uh, let's keep moving so we will uh, continue with uh, gold since many of you seems to be trading gold and you know, used to get a question about that so um, gold guys on the daily time frame uh, we still have a possible bearish market so an impulse correction impulse another consolidation impulse we broke previous structure with another impulse and now we have a possible continuation move so uh, for monthly s2 as a possible market objective it looks very possible looking at the daily candles here on this move here a couple of evening star formation followed by bearish engulfing and friday was another break and close below the previous low so seems like we may have a possible continuation to the downside but be aware of this structure here this may act as possible support uh, for more downside we need to see this structure broken to then look for a correction and continuation so for gold um, and for more continuation to the downside look for that break below for that continuation so uh, we've been talking about uh, EURUSD and oil already so um, here it is pr pretty clear now that um, let's take a look on the daily time frame that after this break below the neckline we had the retest and we are looking for another continuation move which probably gonna be toward these previous lows down here before that we had this previous uh, major sw uh, swing low that we need to keep an eye at because the market may have trouble of 
at that level. So uh, for next week, what we should be looking for here is a possible correction uh, back. Um, if we get any retest to this previously broken structure to do the uh, same as we did uh, here on this move, we looked for a retest and continuation. So now we are looking for the same scenario. Since this range is now broken, we are looking for a retest and possible continuation if we take a fibonacci retracement move depends on if this is going to be our lowest low we're not sure about it yet but as soon as the market start uh, correcting to the upside then you could draw your uh, fibonacci from depends on when it start to move but let's pretend it will start move from here then the 50 percent uh, is a nice level here where it happened to be at the previous structure i would use actually this whole area uh, between the 50 and 618 as my possible kill zone to look for the continuation to the downside on um, on the euro sterling daily time frame also we're still inside this uh, range uh, or bullish flag it depends on how you see it so this could be a uh, bullish flag and uh, looking for continuation but in any case right now we are inside a possible range here so we should play it as a range until you have a break out of it so uh, for the sterling uh, the range here is uh, clear if we look on the lower time frame as the four hour you see that we are still trading inside uh, this range here that is what we should be looking for to play until we have a break out of it. So the same as we mentioned uh, in those um, ranging market ideas, uh, this possibly to reach this level. When it do so, you start looking for a possible bounce to the upside. If we get a break below that range, then we are probably going to the next major swing, which is this area down here. Uh, if this market uh, to correct some of this major move here, as you see, it is a pretty big move here. I would say we should keep an eye on uh, this structure. This is a good structure, been acting as resistance before a couple of times. Support, this is the neckline on this market. So any retest toward this area, it is a po possible good level to look for a short. Possible trouble down here at this level. Uh, so be aware of that but if broken then we are looking for that continuation on sterling usd usd jappy pretty choppy actually on the uh, no matter what time frame you put um, so on the daily time frame we had that break above the previous high and going slowly and last week was pretty choppy here as you see so I don't like to trade in the mid of the range. Um, this slow down here is a good level. This stop up here around the monthly R1 is another good resistance. So support at 108 and resistance at the monthly R1 around 109.40 uh, area. And uh, anything in between is possible actually on this market. So um, we do have a possible double bottom here from last week. And this scenario is possible to see something like, like this to happen. A V-shape um, is a very possible uh, thing to happen. And you could also see a continuation to the downside from here. In any case, keep an eye on this level down here where we have the monthly pivot point that is the key support and key resistance around uh, monthly r1 if that got reached also to look for a possible short from that level we are in a ranging market and uh, even here we should be looking for that new zealand usd let's look at the daily chart on that one even here we still have a bit of a choppiness in this one still not really trending we had a possible bottom here we had the break above the neckline and since then we are going like sideways uh, on this market what is very important here is this previous structure high that is the level that need to be broken for this market to really start reversing if that is the case you have a big opportunity to the upside but as for now we're still seeing uh, how choppy is it is for our time frame i will keep following uh, this uh, possible trend line here as far as there is no break below it there is a possibility for a continuation so 
um, short term support down here if that reached to look for a possible bounce to the upside and resistance is up here this area need to be broken before any continuation to the upside now if this market to keep pushing lower next week and breaks below this area keep an eye on this level where we have monthly pivot point and this um, a trend line uh, coming from below this could be a, a pretty interesting level looking left here it was uh, resistance then start acting support down here and we have monthly pivot point as well as the trend line on the four hour time frame USD chief also a ranging market as you see on the daily time frame we're still going sideways there is no continuation uh, the one thing we have is those higher lows and equal highs here so we start having some kind of a sending triangle if you look at it like this um, something like this uh, we start having that possible ascending triangle but as you saw last week uh, the market did test another time the monthly r1 here got tested and we stopped at that and as you may know a break above this is needed for more upside to start talking about testing previous highs um, if we look at the 200 moving average is not respected at the move at the moment usually when you start getting sideways like this uh, you don't see a clear respect of the moving average so don't think much about that what you should be watching is actually this previous swing high that is the key resistance for more upside here and as you see last week on the four hour time frame we had a pretty nice push to the upside here a strong push to the upside uh, from this level all the way to monthly r1 um, at the beginning of the week since it is uh, the rsi at the overbought and it is a pretty extended leg we may look for a possible correction to the downside but be aware of this level that may give you some uh, support area uh, to then uh, see if uh, the bulls will defend already from this level and start pushing higher so be aware of that especially those lows that are getting higher and higher each time so another higher low could signal possible break and continuation all in all it is a sideways market so sell high buy low but be aware of if you're gonna short it to take profit a little bit early because the moves to the downside are not moving all the way to the bottom as you see here they are making higher lows each time so if this happen again you may get yet another higher low before that um, ascending triangle maybe get broken usd cat on the daily time frame we are having a nice trend to the upside so each and every time you see a break above previous high on the daily you should be looking to buy the dips by the pullbacks and if we go down to the four hour time frame it was a clear here after this move we had the break retest here is the pullback and the continuation happened to the upside another time we see a break pullback and possible continuation so we should be looking to uh, <clears throat> for longs here and targeting uh, the major swing high up here so if there is no uh, lower lows to be made below this structure if that doesn't happen and the structure here keep being support we should be looking for a next leg to the upside on uh, this market um, Aussie USD also um, uh, bearish continuation so after reaching the top of this uh, trend line we had a nice push to the downside break below previous structure low and continuation so we should be looking for a continuation move on this market but be aware that you need to see a break below this level so we had this bearish flag we had it broken retested a couple of time and we're looking for continuation but if you're not in a short trade already you need to be aware of this uh, low down here is a major swing so the market uh, need to show you evidence and that is that it's gonna break below if that is the case then you could look for a retest and continuation lower so uh, that is what i'm looking for for aussie usd and that would be the last market we check here um, many of you guys asking me about entries and exits and uh, for that I have a 
couple of great articles uh, over my site that I published last week. Uh, I highly recommend you to read them. The, the uh, links for those are in the description below. So uh, click on that and go read them. You will surely find some good knowledge about entries and exits. So thanks a lot and see you next week. Bye bye.